Hey there everybody, this is Sly. I wanted to post an update to the big bending water test. I'm so excited to get this done. Some folks have asked me to provide a little bit of history to this test. What were my inspirations and what supporting research have I done to get this far? No problem. Sure, I have over 300 videos of factual information regarding the spherical earth. And even though every photo and video from various altitudes and locations supports the conclusion of bending water, it seems this cross-section style test itself in this manner has never been done. Since launching this, I have been presented with several links of similar tests that have been performed, but the dismissal of theodolites and unfounded claims of fraudulent practices have tainted those results. I wanted to design a test which could not be contested by eliminating specific measuring devices and the horizon itself by creating an incremental cross-section of water. In a perfect world, I would have created a mile-long, thin pane of water, but that would basically be impossible without a rather incredible construction. A large amount of my supporting research for videos never makes it to a video, because some tests are just to fortify conclusions and measurements. Many times, if they do get shown, it's usually just a shorter clip or a I checked that already somewhere in, deep in a hangout. I have been gathering data and observations for this test for well over a year. I collaborate with friends and fellow debunkers for their opinions on the things which I have filmed or discovered to get their feedback, ultimately arriving at the test that is in this project. Much of that has never been shown. The journey on the plausibility of this test started with this video regarding mirages and where they occur, which I had actually presented offline to Sean Hufford one time and a few others. Seeing the little bit of distortion caused by refraction occurring beyond the horizon of the roof of my car told me that as long as I did something prior to the horizon, or not including the horizon, then the distortion was not going to have an incredible influence. I then performed several observations to confirm other aspects of this idea, like showing where the majority of refraction takes place and how bad it was, when it takes place, and when it's barely existent. How bad heat waves distort observations, and over what surface, and also where they seem to be lessened. How much distortion was present, and how it affected the alignment of long distance objects. How close I could be to the ground before stuff gets really messed up. Would there be a need to account for refraction of elevated markings over a distance of 100 plus meters? I've done tests with water levels and leveling speeds and marking methods in less than perfect weather at a mile away. As well as less than perfect lighting over land and over water. I've also done several tests using water levels to find their usability and reliability in comparing them to distant objects. So I think it's safe to say that I've completed quite a bit of homework regarding this test. Now let me go ahead and answer a few repeated questions in my comment threads. Why do you call flat earthers science deniers? Simple. Anyone who can claim the earth to be flat while having absolutely no testable, repeatable, predictable, modelable, calculable, measurable experimentation which complies with the scientific method producing results that only conclude the earth to be flat are deniers of even the most basic scientific principles. Are you going to invite a science denier? That answer has two parts. First, every test that I have ever performed has been open to participation from everyone. I do not check your beliefs at the door. So once I nail down which one of the locations is going to be used and a test date, I will be making that information public. And anyone who wishes to come by and help or observe is more than welcome. I do admit though, it will be kind of short notice, but it will be known. 
The second part of the answer is, the performance of this test will not in any way depend on the attendance of anyone. If it is just me and a friend or family member doing this, then that's just what it's going to be. This test will proceed with or without the presence of opposing viewpoints. While to be honest, Globe Earther presence was never a requirement at any Flat Earth test. Why don't you just borrow a camera? While borrowing a camera or renting a P900 or even better camera is always a possibility, the camera itself is only about 25% of the total requested budget, and even less of the total cost of this entire experiment when you include what I have personally spent out of pocket. What this means is, if I borrowed or rented a camera, I would still need to acquire about 1700 meters of tubing and all the accessories and equipment needed to perform this test. So I offered a raffle, which seems to have been a successful method to assist in the funding. What kind of level will I be using? In a word, none. In the sense of using a mechanical or laser level, there is honestly too much room for either error or manipulation as the results will depend on its accuracy, which is why this test was designed to actually use neither. Alignments of the two parallel lines will only be based on the water level at the first and the last tubes, and the method of alignment of the markers between them will be an eclipse method using a marker light at the last tube. Will you color the water in these tubes? As much as I would love to, unfortunately not. Germany is extremely protective of its environment and draining X amount of colored water intentionally or unintentionally onto the German countryside could lead to punishments that I don't need. What are you going to do about wind in the tubes? While this would have to be pretty heavy and narrow gusts, which would only affect certain parts of the track, I have listened to the various commenters saying that this could have an effect on the test, so I came up with an idea borrowed from the recording industry by putting microphone sponges on the tops of each vertical tube to block wind yet still allow the tube to breathe. Are you going to check for air pressure? I have also added this at the request of several commenters. I will be purchasing a portable wind temperature and barometer device which I will use to read at each post while taking the physical measurements. Are the vertical tubes going to be of even height? Simply put, no, as they do not need to be. They only need to be higher than the water level that is in them. Their height will have absolutely no impact on the water levels themselves. Will I send the assembly to others to repeat this experiment? Well. If someone wishes to pay what would be a rather excessive shipping cost, sure, no problem. Less the camera, of course, and several items that I have provided myself, because the camera is promised to one of the contributors. But do I plan on just generously sending it somewhere? No, as I do not recall anyone sending me, or even offering, their gear, cameras, lasers, custom assemblies, for me or anyone to repeat their observations. What will you show in your video? The release of the results video will actually be in two parts. First is a summary and results video, hopefully only about 15 minutes long, in my usual style with music and information. The second will be basically a raw footage release, and much longer. In this, there will be at least two segments. First will be a time lapse from my GoPro from the observation area of the whole day from start to end. Then will be my walking the line which will be an uninterrupted video of the entire track and levels and measurements from end to end. There may be a few other clips in that second release but currently that's the plan. How will the drawing take place? Those who purchased a perk received a contributor number in their email just like this. Because your privacy is top priority to me, I will be placing numbers in the pot for selection based on your contributor numbers and how many tickets you bought. I will print and cut those live. From there, I will select six numbers out of the pot and order them one to six on the table. Then using a playing dice, I will roll and the ticket, which is in the position shown by the dice, will be awarded the camera. And within a day or so later, it'll be off to the winner. And now let me go ahead and save the best for last. Many who have read the current backers list have noticed that in the first day of this fundraiser, I received a $500 donation from someone who did not even purchase a ticket for the drawing. I'm completely taken aback by this contribution. So from this moment forward, given the name submitted, the camera from this point on will be called Big Willie out of gratitude for that donation. So I hope this clears up some of your questions and your concerns about this test and I truly hope to receive your support. Even if you only want to take a shot at winning the camera, your support is very much appreciated. Y'all have a nice day.